Uh, hey, wow, that means you're supposed to talk. <laughs> oh God, duck! Everybody duck! <laughs> <laughs> you know, if you teach a man to fish, he'll be set for the rest of his life. But I feel like you could teach a man other things. Like if you teach a man to duck, he wouldn't walk into a bar so much. Okay. Hey, that's right. Right. Yeah. So with hey, that, DJ, can you can you uh, use your echo to, or your uh, yeti to go ahead and bring up crickets? <laughs> oh, crickets! Cricket sound, huh? Got that right I'm here. I'm sure I can get that effect sooner or later. <laughs> hey, That's everybody! It. One of us is... is, yeah, one of us is going to have to just get in a sound effect bar for now on. <laughs> I think that's what we need for this place. That's it. It really does, yeah. Anyway, guys, this is Murder Hobo Inc. Between the Rolls Tuesday Talk Show, where we talk about what happened last time, what happened in the future, and uh, some inane topic that we want to talk about and that will cause us to go over nine o'clock and maybe mm -hmm. in, and then to nine thirty. Luckily Carol's not here, so it won't go till midnight. That's that's always a good thing. And oh yeah. yeah. Always a good thing. <laughs> but uh, that, uh that's after the show. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go ahead and get into this real real quick. Uh like I said, this is between the hobo between the rolls, between the hobos. It's a very dirty, stinky place, but you'll have a great time. Oh God, uh, the fish just... <laughs> Shows in the shit around. You scooch over there. <laughs> exactly. I got a hitch on my back. You mind getting that? You mind getting that? <laughs> But guys, you can follow us on Twitch, you can follow us on YouTube, you can take a look at our archive over on YouTube, uh, and follow us on the Twitter, follow us uh, uh, on our Discord channel, talk more about D&D. &D. Uh, if you want to uh, join in on any of these things, like uh, DJ has the unfortunate thing to do tonight, I don't know why he did that to himself. You can email oh, or on. shoot us a Twitter, as well as join in any of our one shots. Uh, that's not happening this week, by the way. That would be next week. Oh God! What? <laughs> what? Si Seinf Seinf Se Seinfeld. Oh, okay. Gotcha. No soup for you. <laughs> and real quick. To thank our sponsors, we'd like to thank Pirate Dog Dice uh, for when you're rolling like shit. Pirate Dog Dice. No, I'm sorry. Uh, 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 if you want dice made out of dog shit, Pirate Dog... Uh, you know what? Skip to the next sponsor. Hey, the next sponsor is Adventure <laughs> Sense. <laughs> From our wonderful people over at Oddfish Games. They do other things too, like the Shine Project or How to RPG with a Cat or the, I can't remember the cooking Cooking one with Dice. Cooking with Dice. Is it Cooking with Dice? I don't know, but I, essentially have, that's what it is. Is it like a cookbook? <laughs> it is an actual it, it cookbook. Is. Ooh, it is. Yes. And that How to RPG fun. with Your Cats. Mm -hmm. well, I did say that one. Thanks. Yeah. The one I missed was. No, no, I think no, that's no. Like, I'm you. pretty sure that's code for RPGing with your kids because I think that's the same attention span. Huh? What? <laughs> huh? Are we starting this show? <laughs> oh gosh! Fine. Let me pull up. Oh god! What did I do? What did oh, you okay. do? Okay, I hit the wrong button. I hit the wrong button. It is okay. Uh, so. Before we get on tonight, uh, there's a few familiar faces. There's a few unfamiliar faces. If you want all of our faces to be unfamiliar, you can also listen to our podcasts, which are some kind of link here below. Or Frank can put a white piece of paper in front. Honestly, it's this not is as the pale money as maker he is, right here. Honestly. I was about to say he's our face man. <laughs> oh dear, our oh, face man. There you go. Oh yeah. I don't know. You should do a silly thing with your facial hair, Frank. Then you could be really a face man. Like just straight out. No, no, no. Oh, yeah. Curls, curls, curls. Oh, do the the uh, handlebar yeah. mustache. Do the yeah. yeah. Do the rotten yeah. fingers. Yeah. Be mud. <laughs> All right. Oh let's talk no. About the <laughs> are we are we doing the Hitler with the goatee? Sure, we might as well. Hipster <laughs> Hitler. Yeah, Hitler, Argen Hitler. Argentina Hitler. <laughs> They'll never I recognize like me with this part. <laughs> I yeah. like it. I like oh, it. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. All right. Let's... <laughs> Give it a Bob Ross. Put it on Give it something a Bob Ross. Nice. <laughs> Make it a little bit nicer, yeah. 
So let's go around. Let's introduce ourselves. I'm obviously Kyle, chosen to be the host here tonight because I can spell Mississippi with one eye. <laughs> M-I-S-S-I-S-S-I-P-P. There you go. <laughs> and his birthday is every year. Every year. <laughs> That's right. Uh, except this year. I'm done. I'm, I'm, I hit 30. I'm done. I don't need to get any older. It's fine. I'm this not in denial. Punk. You're in denial. Look at this young punk. <laughs> That's Egypt. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Frank, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? I'm Frank. If you don't know me, you're new, and thanks for joining us. If you aren't new, you know who I am. Next! David! <laughs> hi, I'm David, and if this is your first time here, well, hi. <laughs> How's it going? Uh, I am on, usually, the Thursday night show, which is now every other Thursday night, uh, Cacophony, and I am also on our Calamity campaign, which is every other Saturday, so... I play Ingbe and Calamity and Zadar in Cacophony. And any other time, you might find me here at Between the Rolls. So, that's it. I was going to say, last Tuesday was the first time we haven't had you on Between the Rolls in such a long time. It's been a while. <laughs> I'd say it was a nice break, but Carol filled the space up really well. Oh. Uh, right. yeah, you know I'm getting hate wow, mail for that's, that shit. That's a uh, <laughs> and, and you know, you're me. starting to look a lot like Mona Lisa being painted by Bob Ross when you lean back. Like <laughs> you got to do it's the right stone. You know what? No, no, no. We we need we need to we need to do something with that. There you go, <laughs> Kyle. That's it. <laughs> Where's my print screen? The Kyle Lisa. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. And finally, DJ, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Tell us a little bit about you. I think you're the, is this the first time or second time? No. Second, at least. Second or third, actually. Second yeah. or third. Uh, oh, hello, I'm DJ. What? Get a shirt uh, on that one. I have a shirt. Oh, well. My murder. He's home. wearing it. Oh. I am. <laughs> I don't that's wear that's classy shit right there. there. That's, that's classy shit. <laughs> <It's> ca <laughs> no, Kyle, I wasn't prepared like you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> hello i'm dj uh yeah there's not much to say about me i i do show up sort of <laughs> in uh the thursday uh campaign although i'm completely covered in a mask that's true you this can't is... see me that's which is probably better yes. one, yeah. <laughs> i should have i should have grabbed the mask actually i just warned that today that, that was actually oh, oh, bad of me. That is. Yeah. I'm racially insensitive, bozo tonight. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! Oh, no, I'm, you know what? I'm a puppy. That's what I am. That's you. That's what you are. You're the puppy. You're the yes, creepy I've puppy also from Shining. <laughs> yeah, I've also shown up in a couple one shots. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm probably the one that brings everything down to earth, except for my last character. I, I was about to say, down. man, you're you're last. Yeah, my last character still brought it down to earth. In a way. <laughs> In a way. <laughs> well, speaking of one shots, why don't we go ahead and get the party started and then we'll talk about our topic <coughs> later on. Uh Thursday night we had the cacophony soap opera. Mm -hmm. David. I, yeah. You star in that. Uh yeah. That you? episode is called Top of the Tower. Cause guess what, folks? There's the always tower. room at the top. And yeah, we made it. We made it to the top of the tower. So, unfortunately, uh, what was waiting for us at the top of the tower was an ass kicking, which Frank loves to revel in. <laughs> You're welcome. So, between that and the ghosts of the curd, uh, yeah, yeah. Curd. <laughs> so, sorry, working on Kyle's. Uh, portrait i now have oh a name no for. i'll oh, post God. the name in our chat yeah you're gonna yeah, have get, to get your head it. slightly lower kyle i was about to say go, 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 there go. you go there you go there you go nice that, that, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh god folks if you could only see that <laughs> anyway uh yeah so basically we got to the top we got an ass kicking uh we got some pretty damn good loot but uh we're also posed with uh more questions and just <laughs> when I thought we were done with the tower. I'm getting to it, Frank. <laughs> just when we thought we were done with the tower and we're gonna head our way down, we noticed another door. And yeah, we proceeded to open it. 
and look under the bed, and lo and behold, now we have two idiots on their hands. So, <laughs> yeah, three beams of light, two hit, two targets. <laughs> Next thing you know, feeble mind spell comes up, and that's that's all she wrote, folks. So. And that's the end of Cacophony. That's All it. Right. That's how it ends. <laughs> it may be. It could be. <laughs> it could be. <laughs> so that was the episode, Top of the Tower. Uh, it's a good episode. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, if you're into the story, this this is, this is kind of bringing things together a little bit. It raises questions, <laughs> but it's also kind of all coming together the way our DM intended it. So. I think that's a lie. Frank doesn't intend anything. No, he just pulls it out. <laughs> yeah, right out. Raccoon <laughs> right out. Steve slaps you in the face with it. Something. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It. All right. Well, this past weekend was a, a, a special con. Uh, Frank, what con was that? Spawn of Cyclops Con out of Atlanta, Georgia. So uh, if you're watching this, you're too late. You didn't have a chance to sign up for the con. And we got to play in the con games. Except for one guy on Friday who was lucky. So suck it. Uh, and David, I think you were also in that one. Mm -hmm. Ocular, I believe it was called. Ocular. Yes. <laughs> what happened? Well, uh, Frank's offering for that was, yeah, the, what was it, Frank? The son of ocular or something like that? <laughs> uh, ocular, no, it, son of ocular? Yeah, I, exactly. I, I had to go ocular. with that eyeball theme, so. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was a great episode. It was a great scenario. Thank you, John, for joining us in that. Uh, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun, Uh with you on that on that cast for that night it was it was great it was a great adventure um we enter the town i can't remember the name of the town because everything is ocular exactly <laughs> and and what was it and what was the the anti-hero's name optic optic you see, folks, we ran with a theme for that so <laughs> so somebody named shades Nah, you no, know, I, I should have made the we uh, went the there. baker shades. Yeah, yeah. So. Four eyes, nothing. shades mixed body. Yeah. <laughs> Our, uh, they have large far notes, vision. Though. <laughs> yeah, far vision and this twin near vision. You know, there should have been a cyclops in this episode. There should have been. So, I almost poked one of your eyes out. <laughs> I tried. You tried. <laughs> Uh, so, folks, how the episode starts, our weary travelers end up in the, this newfound city. During, and as soon as we get there, we notice that, you know, things are kind of kind of abandoned, kind of desolate. We come to find out that uh, after uh, asking a guard that there is a hanging going on in the town square across the river. So... Uh, our intrepid crew loves a good hanging. We stop, pick up some rotten produce, mead, and all that, and proceeded our way there, folks. So, ready to join in the revelry of somebody dying. So, uh, yeah, we're witnessing the, the hanging. Uh, one of our crew, Frank, from, <laughs> from our Sunday campaign. I love playing with him because it's just chaos reigns with him and all that. So aside from taking a, 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 a piton and putting it inside of a head of cabbage and throwing it at the magistrate. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Just, just chaos ensued. So uh, comes to find, come to find out that the hanging is interrupted by uh, yeah, by a jailbreak. <laughs> so uh, unfortunately one person that was uh scheduled for the execution actually did die by being the unfortunate recipient of the fireball so gimp gimp died gimp died <laughs> so as the anti-heroes escape uh the magistrate calls out to the crowd anybody who can capture him a bounty is offered so we pursue uh what four individuals to try to collect the bounty and just hilarity ensues 
uh, culminates with a showdown with the charismatic uh, rogue ocular. So optic, optic, optic. God, I can't. I, if only you had played med game. Yeah, if only <laughs> optic. Okay, it's such a name for 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 a rogue henchman. Anyway. Uh, it culminated in that, uh, yeah, <laughs> us extorting money from him for his freedom and then turning his ass in as we're walking out the door. So that was the episode, folks. It was a lot of fun, John. It was a blast. I hope you come and play with us again. Uh, any of our one shots or anything like that, you're welcome. Or if you just want to come and be on the panel on BTR, you're welcome. So, this game, oh, I got a game that had... runs on Tuesday joined on uh, the discord channel like uh, yes. many other yes. viewers could yes so uh i would not be surprised uh, uh if he joins in what no i would be surprised what why would anybody <laughs> honestly why would anybody and i say i'm surprised anytime someone actually returns but i'm not at this point because there's a Ooh. lot of dysfunctional people out there who just want to revel in this crap and and so they they gotta get past they they gotta get past our gatekeeper carol (laughs) yes (laughs) there's another fucking email i'm gonna have to deal with (laughs) honestly pretty sure you just go (laughs) in yeah any minute she's gonna come in behind dj exactly exactly (laughs) i didn't say any of this shit Just boot me out of the chair. Ah, that's it. And another thing. <laughs> oh man! So that was the episode, folks. As you can see, it, it was it, it was a pretty busy weekend because after that we have Saturday, and I think DJ is covering that. Why don't you tell us a little bit about it, man? <laughs> Uh, excuse me, David. <laughs> hey, DJ, I hear you uh, uh, were also playing on that con game on Saturday. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? There you go. <laughs> well, I'm waiting because I'm assuming Carol will barge in and take my spot in a moment. But um, oh, you're uh, getting an email, too. <laughs> you're going to get an email. <laughs> no, I'm just getting the air full. <laughs> She's typing it right now on her phone. <laughs> She's going to send um, it to you. What was the name of the game, Frank, again? Uh, something eye in the Tower. Eye in the Tower. The tower. Eye in right. the Tower. I knew it had I in it. Just I put an eye in it. Eye in the Tower! Gotta... <laughs> it's so, uh, the Eye of the Tower yeah. game was actually quite enjoyable. Uh, it was a game that Frank was given to run, I believe. No, I wrote it. No, he oh, wrote, you wrote it. it? Okay, yeah. I wasn't sure. It's got his I wrote it. all over. Uh, if it's crap, has... I wrote it, so... <laughs> I'm just impressed because of what you added into it. Um, but yeah, I, no, it's I basically... Am excellent. This actually explains a little bit, too, because we were given a tall tale from a jackass, which I'm assuming was literally just the embodiment of Frank. Yes. Just the embodiment. <laughs> That's about this was every just NPC. Him. Yeah. Yes. Every is just NPC him. <laughs> is the embodiment of Frank. Yeah. It was just him. Uh, with an MPC tag on. Uh, I imagine if they ever make a TV show about what happens, all the NPCs are still going to be played by Frank. (laughs) (laughs) They just put his face over every NPC. (laughs) If you're ever playing in a murder hobo game and there's a kind and compassionate character in it, yeah. That's my game. That's my game. So... Uh, after his, um, you know, drunken rant about this tower that was 20 miles away that we had to go through, like, Death Hill, Death Valley, Death Forest, uh, Cross we were all river. like, uh, yeah, <laughs> sure, this is a little weird. Uh, asked a guard, it was like two miles down the road. It was fine. No no big deal. We uh, went to this tower where we were supposedly a, a huge gem was spotted at the top of it, top of it, and no one had gotten it before. So we're all like, yeah, okay, we'll go there. Why not? We want money. <laughs> I mean, who doesn't nowadays? Okay. And uh, yeah. It's so we got to this different package. Tower. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gotta go get it. Right. Exactly. <laughs> so we got there and found that some um, other individuals attempted to do something similar, but didn't fare as well. We got um, harassed by some. Mud methods. Mm, yeah, mud yeah, methods mud, mud methods. 
I don't know if Frank was trying to give a innuendo there or not. God damn it, Frank, stop being that way. <laughs> poop, poop innuendos. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> tried to try to poop us, uh, but you know, one of them breathed on us, you know, without <laughs> consent. That was nasty of it. We you defeated have sent it. Sent an Atiag to them. <laughs> yeah, we defeated that them. Although him. a bell went off. We still don't know why the bell went off. Nope. Still don't know. Anyways, uh, we crossed the bridge, which I said was perfectly fine right from the beginning. Nothing bad happened at the bridge. The bridge was perfectly safe. No issues whatsoever. Uh, <laughs> I feel like the bridge is not perfectly safe. Uh, yeah. Oh, no, it was. Yeah, it was. I yeah, still, it was I still don't believe oh, it. Though. Okay. All right. So both yeah, things are still up. One has yeah. dropped. The yet. bridge is still there. The bridge is still there. <laughs> Um, went in the tower, and of course, one of the twin or one of the brothers, Frank. Uh, what were their tortle brother names? Two or Toga Toga brothers. brothers, the two Toga brothers. Yes, it doesn't the matter. Young, just say one actually, or two. yeah, okay. <laughs> the younger Frank, who was playing one of the Tor- uh, Tortiga brothers, uh, decided to uh, split the party. Good job. Uh, <laughs> and uh a hallmark for success yeah he uh ended up finding the bell but also ended up finding the massive jaws of a dire wolf while the rest of us were at a tower dicking around checking out stuff (laughs) you know not worrying anything about him he ended up fighting it i believe his brother went and saved him at the same time i'm poking around find a tapestry look at the tapestry um uh, i had a batman origin story happen to me um my my gnomish voice got deeper. Uh, I discovered that wow, I'm a dumbass. Of, <laughs> there was a ton of treasure and all this bat crap because you know sell it to wizards for spell components. Uh, we finally got back together, argued a bit. Uh, we decided to go up the tower, uh, or two of us decided to go up the tower. The Tortuga brothers found a trap door. We argued for a while. We decided to go up. We went up. Uh, found a dead individual, so sad, that hung herself. <laughs> kind of gave us some backstory where this tower was like a refuge of some sort. Oh, yeah, that's right. One of the Tortuga brothers also destroyed uh, the other hint to what happened. <laughs> Fucking dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> Told you, chaos uh, reigns. Anyways, uh, more stuff happened. We found dead, more dead bodies up at the top. Didn't find no treasure. Uh, but spotted something down below so we went down below we were gonna go underneath the tower but no the younger brother had to go off on his own again then we went and tracked him down seems he awoke a uh baby dragon and the baby dragon nearly ate his face off badly like down to one hit point badly (laughs) uh Carol's character uh my character and the older Tortuga brother character older Frank uh, handily beat that uh, dragon down. My gnome was extremely brave and heroic. It did amazing. Uh, and it's right. written that way. In his book. <laughs> that, that is true. <laughs> That's the how dragon, it's written. <laughs> yeah. Pen so let it be ma- written. So let it be done. The pen and, was mightier than the sword in yep. this fix. And uh, we never found the gem. No, oh, that's right. You never yeah, you never it. did. We stole never, it. Yeah, we never found it. <laughs> Doesn't mean someone didn't find it. <laughs> and that was the end of our adventure because you know we were kind of toast and it was time to go. And Frank doesn't like to go over, and he's like, "Hard, hard stop." <laughs> uh, to be fair, the convention did want hard stops. So okay. yeah. yeah, sounds like there was a whole lot more though to that. Oh, there was a ton of as we, uh, as we heard afterwards. <laughs> So that was that. It was a fantastic adventure. Uh, Everyone did a great job role playing, uh, especially me, especially the brothers. Sort of Carol, not so much. (laughs) Not so much. Sort of Carol. What? No. (laughs) And ding, another email. (laughs) (laughs) The old Frank Frank was pretty much Frank. I always email you. (laughs) Frank was pretty much Frank. So you know, it was it was just watching him play himself. But in a, a good touch way. Not in a Cuomo touch way? Not in a Cuomo touch way. <laughs> nope. So that was the Eye of the Tower. Uh, it actually is a good one. I suggest if anybody wants to run it for their group, yes. do it. It's actually pretty solid. Wow. Both are. Both are. Man. Get a dragon in it. 
Are you pitching Frank's stuff? Yeah. Uh, we both yes. are, man. Uh, wow. <laughs> That's what happens I mean, I don't pitch push. everything. <laughs> I don't pitch right, everything. Man, Frank, where can they find your stuff if they want to run an adventure? Uh, that's tinyurl.com slash adventure. No S. Adventure. adventure. Uh, those two games won't be available till probably 2021. Just it, is 2021. it is 2021. It is 2021. 2022, sorry. Uh, yeah, I don't, I've already decided everything for this year, so and there's no open slots. That's how much crap I've written. I'm like Stephen King, only far less successful, less rich, <laughs> less noticeable, say. not as I'm many followers say. and things of that. Nature. No movies, yeah. No many, movie yeah. deals. Yeah. But yeah. No, no, no good movies and bad TV movies. Yeah. I want to make a bad TV movie of D and D. I kind of do too, actually. Uh, yeah, I mean, I would watch got that. Good stuff <laughs> all the time. All the all the D and D movies are good. Man, I am rewatching all the Hercules TV movies. Right now, nice solid. Uh, love Schwarzenegger. No, not Schwarzenegger. Kevin, Kevin Serbo. 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 Yeah, Kevin Serbo. Yeah. Come on, Zena. I'm the youngest one here. Yeah, that's one. <laughs> Zena. I knew Lucy Zena. Lawless. I, uh, Lucy Lawless was in the first movie. Yeah. As an Amazon. Oh, that's yep. right. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay, I'm just trying to think. It was uh, Hercules, Zena. And I feel like there was a Beastmaster show around the There was, the although there was also Young Hercules, and I believe oh, yeah. that had Ryan Gosling in it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Young right. Hercules was Ryan Gosling. Yeah. All right, I've gone off topic, but that was funny. Anyway. <laughs> oh, I love discussing all this lore, but, you know, we'll talk more oh. about that. Oh, yeah. Oh, nice. Because oh, nice. we can't make the segue yet until we talk about Frank's Margu campaign. Yes. Uh, well, unlike the other two games that I wrote, the Margu campaign is stellar in the fact that it's as mediocre as humanly possible. Uh, these guys uh, are at least 90, 95% responsible for having a deity destroy an entire fucking village of halflings who just had a small kleptomania problem. Uh, and the party went apeshit, stole something from a deity. Deity came in, whew, wiped out the entire village. Uh, including two of the six zonkeys that they were awarded in one of their earlier adventures. They then decided to move into the interior because they don't have a ship anymore either because it got whacked. Uh, and they met an NPC that was extremely kind, very gracious, very helpful <laughs> on their side. Kyle, did you a did you drop villain. into his game? Ty Kyle went ahead and sent me the information on that one. I did, yes. <laughs> Uh, yeah, not surprised. And, and then uh, they uh, fought an owlbear, did a few other things uh, off camera there or, or on camera off topic. There were a lot of inappropriate zonky mating rituals, yeah, including says. Frank Sr. showing his moves uh, and his two sons are going to be scarred for life which is hilarious. Um, but uh, they, they have moved on. They found another small inland halfling village that a festival is going on and fortunately it is the festival of the full moon of course uh robert of zeppelin uh, is a lycanthrope uh so uh, this fucking village is toast uh we'll see that probably this sunday uh and you know what i wish i could tell you more stories about that but that would be lore isn't it kyle that is lore a boar? What? No, no. Lore. Lore, Frank. <laughs> God, what a snore. <laughs> we are talking about the Thursday uh, campaign Minotaur's with Kyle yet. Lore. <laughs> oh. Hey, Dr. Seuss got banned. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What the hell? It got cancel cultured. You know what? Hop on pop. I'm fine if that one disappears forever. <laughs> I don't like the kids jumping on me. I, I want to... <laughs> <laughs> you keep jumping on me, you're gonna get cancel culture too. <laughs> so no more Grinch for Christmas. Oh no, don't say eh, especially because I'm the Grinch. So 
Yeah. No, no, no. I'm the Grinch. You, you have no idea how no, much. No, I hate no, no. Carol's the Grinch. <laughs> no, no. She's the opposite. Like, and you know no, I don't want to get into thing. it. I am not the Grinch. I don't know where he got that. It was I'm David Cindy that Lou. time. Thank but, you very much. And stop making fun of me on the stream. I'm not emailing. I'm going to save it all for one email. And I don't type like that. <laughs> That's coming to email. I only yet. type like that when I get my typewriter out. <laughs> I, I do not have an email from her yet, so she's probably just seething. No, yeah, I doubt she's watching. Actually, I don't think she is. If we haven't gotten anything. She's not watching. <laughs> she's got a little fedora on yes. with the with the card in it that says "scoop." <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's the lore of the show, producer. This, yeah, this deep seated. <laughs> Air Carol a new one. Every possibility you can get. <laughs> but while we're talking about it, I'll make sure I, I tell her to watch this one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wow. And remember, guys, go check out our YouTube channel. There's an actual playlist of worst times tearing into Carol. <laughs> this is going to be up there in the top three. <laughs> Not top one, though. <laughs> it's not the top one, but it's up there. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, uh, most of us here are running campaigns of one sort or another. I know uh, DJ is normally running a Call of Cthulhu on Tuesday nights. Uh, Frank, of course, is running everything under the sun, except for the one Thursday night. <laughs> I'm getting tired. I'm tired. <laughs> And David is running for kids, and so <laughs> we all have to deal with uh, with lore and what's that's all about, and and how do you guys? Um, what is lore uh, for a campaign, or maybe even for just a one shot? How do you define that? Is it something that is always pertinent to the to the campaign or the one shot you're running, or can it just be anything? Obviously that. Uh, pertains to your world i thought um, it was data's brother i thought we were discussing that i was watching next gen earlier before this <laughs> <laughs> this isn't about star trek no boy nope. no, all right it's the wrong no, no, we, just the lost all our, yeah, we just lost all our klingon followers yeah <laughs> wait, 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 wait before oh. you go Carol. <laughs> <laughs> so for me, I would say lore, to be honest, is the heart of the campaign. I am a heavy lore person. Uh, I find it, it is the history. It is, it, and I think that kind of defines it for me right there. It is the history of the world. Everything before your campaign is considered lore, whether it be recent, ancient, mysterious, legendary, mythology, whatever. It's it it's what defined the world prior to what you're doing. It gives it definition. It, it's like it's like your Bob Ross painting in the background. You you were you were the Kyle Lisa, but the image of the painting in the background is the lore. It gave the setting that you're you're doing your pose at. <laughs> well, that painted a nice picture. <laughs> <laughs> no, but DJ is absolutely right, Sam. So I find it, I, for me, I find it extremely important. Um, obviously, there are probably many people uh, that read uh, uh, fantasy books of one sort of another. Uh, if you look at my background, you can see I have uh, one of the famous images of Dragonlance uh, from the Summer, uh, Summer Flame, Dragons of Summer Flame book. And that one, to me, is a, deals with a lot of lore. Uh, it's where they started talking about the Erda, and they changed a lot in the in the setting through that book. So it it became heavy lore when things moved <clears throat> on, and that's something else too. Is it's not lore isn't just what happened in the past; it's also what your characters end up defining as they adventure. You know, like burning down a whole halfling village. That will be some great lore right? down in the history books. I mean, when gods come down and smite, it smite uh, halflings. That, that's that's some pretty heavy crap. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right. Yeah, no, DJ, that's a great definition of it. Uh, David, Frank, you have anything to add to it? Well, uh, just to expound on what DJ has already stated is lore is always being written. I don't know how many times just, you know, as a joke, you know, something stupid had happened, just like, okay, that's now lore, you know. We're but, whores. <laughs> but that per- pertains to your particular type of campaign or the particular <laughs> one you're playing. Uh, so, no, but um, I mean, depending on the system. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Anyway, as I was saying, depending on your your system that you play or anything like that, especially if it's D&D, I mean, there is lore going back for generations now. And um, I'm playing with new players, and to much to my surprise, they have read a lot of that. And it's, it's really hard to come up with new shit sometimes, you know. And what I mean by that is, like, do something that's just out of character <laughs> or just not not lore um you know they they'll they'll question it <laughs> so i mean it it is a point of reference for for your players now as a dm you know of course you you take liberties with with the lore and you know craft it and make it your own but um yeah it's just i just find uh my take on lore is that uh it's it can be organic and it can be always changing. So that's my, my take on it. So, uh, you know, I'd add one thing uh, and it's especially pertinent to the Saturday campaign uh, that I just thought of. And that is false lore. Uh, just because it's written and it's believed it's not always accurate. And on the Saturday campaign, if you watch that, these guys were fi- going to face off with these horribly difficult creatures to kill and took them out in no time. And I know a couple of the players are already on their heels because it's like we were told this was really tough. And aside from an arrow in Rob's ass and a beak in the other cheek, it wasn't really that tough. Uh, and <laughs> And that was actually intentional because I knew looking at this creature, it's not going to be tough at all for these guys to kill. So uh, the I, I think the aspect of a false lore or an incorrect lore will also help further the campaign. Or not. Might just suck. <laughs> uh, and then there's also not just false lore, but also conflicting lures that say yes. if you have multiple points of view, say mm-hmm. from one kingdom or one faction or, you know, you know different just different like tribes uh i almost think of like the episode of avatar where they're going through the ravine and they have the two tribes they're talking about the two like the two people that were racing it's like each have their own point of view but no one knows for sure which one's true oh real quick frank avatar is this uh anime show <laughs> I've seen it. it's got generation. smurfs in it yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah that's it. Gargamel. Gargamel. Smurfs. yeah Gargamel. Smurfs. and the wookies are in that one too yeah. smurfs the wookies and guns <laughs> add beer and you're all set <laughs> actually another, another blue aliens with the tails that's right <laughs> another example actually in dragonlance again is there's lore on how dwarves are created Dwarves don't like that lore, so they have their own lore. <laughs> they refuse they to accept really do not lore. like that. <laughs> yeah, they really don't like that lore. <laughs> yeah. Now in the cacophony one on Thursday, these guys found out some information that was not presented to them uh, when they took the job, and apparently this whole mess was created by the clan or the tribe that hired them. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> so that that that's you know uh, a narrative. That's another narrative that we have to explore because of the the lore now. So you know, and Frank crafted that one, and um, yeah, plot twist. So, <laughs> well, speaking about players uh, uh, finding lore, I mean, let's expound on that a little bit. How do you guys introduce the lore? Do you just spit it out at them you give them a 25 page essay or uh in carol's case 
two hundred and fifty page email, or <laughs> <laughs> there and we you, go. you don't get my emails; it'd be longer. <laughs> <laughs> I've received a couple of yours. Carol still has you beat. <laughs> says says, nice. the, the, says the guy who gives me this much backstory, <laughs> 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 At, which I love. I love player characters that give me backstory. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, no uh, I can give more. I just, I just don't <laughs> abuse my GMs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I know where my recycle bin's at. <laughs> I don't know. You're supposed to use that to heat your place. Uh, I don't uh, it catches fire easier when it's in smaller bundles. <laughs> nice. You got to nice. make that bird's Coil. nest first, and then you get the spark in there. <laughs> uh, but how do your PCs go about finding the lore? Where do you interject it? Um, I mean, with your background, DJ, we'll call attention to the Dragonlance series again. A festival is obviously a great way to interject lore into a campaign because Mm -hmm. your PCs are going to want to enjoy themselves. And obviously all the uh, the nuance, the culture is going to be in that. um, You know what? Uh, I'm going to call myself out. I had to listen to myself last Thursday, so I knew what to uh, talk about this coming Thursday. And I caught myself going, um, um, um. And I was <laughs> screaming happens. as I was listening to myself it saying, happens. Um, and now I'm doing it again. But with uh, Culture Festival, what other ways are there of interjecting lore? I know I guys uh, asked you this question earlier you know are there other interesting ways to interject it like say in the middle of a combat uh, but where do you guys interject your lore for your players to find it and let's go with frank this time uh i like to start off like the campaign uh give the players a specific amount of knowledge uh and then you have to expound on it as they go about doing different things uh say with the Sedellus campaign they understood that uh, marijuana was actually a herb that was grown and collected uh, by certain farmers. Uh, just Kyle. <laughs> yeah, just just making uh, sure. But uh, also uh, when they go off on their own, I also like to supply a healthy amount of books uh, so that they can go ahead and read up on the situation. And I think Kyle and Ernie did a really good job on that as well as Blake they went ahead and they invested the time to go ahead and read the books that I had given them, ergo giving them a little bit of insight. Now, was all of it right? No, it was not. Uh, Did it give them a better view and a deeper feeling for the content of where they were adventuring? Sure. Uh, So if you aren't going to fuck with your players, give them something useful. Uh, As Kyle alluded to in the middle of combat, if you're fighting a guy, you might recognize his shield crest as, oh, holy shit, this is the undead nine, and this guy's going to fucking beat the hell out of us. Uh, throw Carol at him and run. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you. Well, she is missing a leg now, so it should be easy. <laughs> it should be Egg, easy. <laughs> Eileen. Uh, but in order to keep a campaign going, you have to introduce new storylines. Uh, new history, in my opinion, uh, and just give them more lore. It doesn't have to be the Ten Commandments or the Lord of the Rings trilogy. It can just be, well, this city was founded by Steve, the adventurer, and, uh, you know, he liked to kill bars. And thus Cacophony was born. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now they, They've been back in time. They know mm-hmm. how Cacophony was born. Yeah, we know. Yeah, yeah. It, it, if it ever fails... Just just go back in time. <laughs> Marty McFly their asses. You, you run out of ideas? Back in time. <laughs> back in time. Go. How'd that happen? Well, you stupid fuckers did it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, DJ, uh, if you want to expound more on uh, giving lore or how your PCs find it. So generally I give lore through either making sure that it's stated uh when presented like in an adventure this person may be from this area he may not be from the village that you're starting in but he's a tall dark man so you know that he's from like the plains that are to the east giving a more giving more depth than just the area you're in or like frank was saying um 
you see uh, a knight with a uh, rose symbol on him, uh, which in Dragonlance you would probably realize is a knight of uh, knight of the rose, or it could be um, uh, various individuals um, from different places just have different looks to them, but by expanding on uh, oh, I know that this person's from the north or this person's from the south. It can give a lot of depth to the world that you're in versus just the small part that you're exploring. Um, so you're not necessarily waiting for your PCs to even ask about this no, person. I as, as you a, describe a person yeah. per se, you're saying, oh yeah, from the east and Okay, or that's you might say, "Oh, roll a history check to see what you know." Sure. Um, personally, I'm a I'm for giving a little bit rather than players asking. I want to make sure that it's a story for them versus them always asking me. You heard it here, folks. DJ is a very giving D uh, GM. <laughs> uh, yes, that includes damage. <laughs> that includes damage. I give I more give damage. And death the damage. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god <laughs> so uh, yeah I'm it, just picturing a Galadriel uh, and I will give you all <laughs> dude if I could do that effect I would <laughs> you got that. the mic man you can do it <laughs> you totally I could can do, do the it. voice I just can't yeah. do the lighting effect that, that, that's the good stuff Give it time. You'll you'll get some lights and stuff like that. You'll you'll yeah, you'll get it. Make myself look black and white and stuff, maybe. <laughs> Whoa, we don't see color on here. We hate yeah. everybody. Wow. Yeah. What wait, lens wait, wait. do you look through? Wow. <laughs> oh, Judge man. people by the content of their podcasts and not the color of their skin. Where no, no, by, by the co- by the podcast. <laughs> by the podcast. The night of the nine. <laughs> nice. Okay. All right, David, go ahead. There we go. There you go. (laughs) Now, uh, I do want to call out. (laughs) And I will be a terrible DM. I will give you everything. The screen goes monochromatic. Wait, 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 wait. There we go. Yeah, there. (laughs) Wow. Wow. Tiefling DJ. There you go. Just need some horns, damn it. Need to talk to Caitlin. (laughs) (laughs) Over initiative. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my goodness! All right, David. How this? I was really interested in your answer because I know you deal with kids all the time. Mm -hmm. Are they really inquisitive in the game world stuff, or Uh, how do you interject? for the young ones you'd be surprised they really are inquisitive when it comes to 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 gameplay um usually i give them a bit during session session zero kind of like how we have the intro before the show tell them a little bit about it um you know kids don't have to be led that easily so i mean i just leave it to plot hooks you know i could put like an old man you know uh you know pulls you aside has a scroll presents you with a scroll you know and stuff like that they'll have a thousand questions about that guy and that has nothing to do i was thinking that oh jeez, jeez, never mind <laughs> Anyway, the point that I'm trying to say is plot hooks, introducing characters, um, NPCs and stuff like that. That's a good way to to add lore to your game because, yeah, there we go. Hey, Galadriel. Yeah. So, but, uh, you know, kid, kids will find the plot hook and they will ask a thousand questions about a particular thing. Like once I gave them a coin or whatever we started it off uh with um we started the campaign with they they each got a letter and then um they had to uh all meet at this tavern of course everything starts at a tavern and all that well come to found out what they come to find out they didn't know some of them had bounties on their heads and they had to you know <laughs> 
I presented <laughs> questions to them and you know if they answered wrong you know they were gone and stuff like that you know they start their end of the campaign in in the um you know in the stronghold you know and the others have to be- have to break them out so but they wanted to know okay the stronghold tell us about it and i'm just like well no one's ever escaped it you know there's rumors that there's tunnels that that are that that lead to the sewers you know and kyle's actually, got that uh, adventure sense too i believe oh yeah he's got that one i was actually just thinking uh the scene from conan the destroyer with the uh the rogues like my brother's sister's cousin <laughs> That's not what I said. It's my cousin's brother's sister's aunt. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. But like I was saying, plot hooks with kids are the best way to put lore into a game. All right. Probably better with kids because adults are jackasses about it. <laughs> Frank. Yeah, I got a full <laughs> cast of them. <laughs> I, I mean, sometimes I mean adults need to be led more than the kids do. So, you know. That's true. This is true. Oh like, on, here's the on. adventure. Oh, I want to go do all. I want to go do this go for loot personal reason. Every yeah. house, door to door, but the forge is over. It's here. Like we're not the trying to play out your weapons. personal, like you know you know thief fantasy or you know uh you know i want to i want to go against the law fantasy i mean i guess we are but i put a pitten in the head of lettuce and throw the mayor fantasy and no hit him with a crit 20 steal from every single kid you meet god okay sometimes the group wants to do something else now what did you guys want to do oh. no you can't burn down the village like, why do you want to kill these political individuals? I don't get it. This has nothing to do with the plot. They're there. They're, uh, They're there, yeah. <laughs> it was so funny because the, the game at the comic store was being run by two DMs. You know, the one guy that was the DM, his work schedule conflicted, and I had to, I was just kind of thrown into the mix. So <laughs> we're continuing his, his game. But <laughs> everything would change, and he would change the lore and all that, and it was just not congruent at all. And uh, so one day I finally said, uh, I started playing his scenario. I had written it, uh, like, what my adventure would be for that day. And... Um, you know, I, I just looked at it. The lore was not making sense. I just crumpled up a piece of paper. Kids, do you want to play an evil campaign? They were like, fuck yeah! You know, I mean, it was... Eight-year-olds. And then <laughs> they, they were eight. parents came Literally, in. Literally, some of them said that. that <laughs> some of them said that. And it was just like, keep it down, <laughs> you know? Is there a red-hot poker anywhere near? I see some ass that needs burning. And I'm just whoa. like, whoa, whoa. <laughs> guy, I, I just said, right and up the And then half stories. the table had to go sit in the corner. Yep. <laughs> I just told them, write up your backstories. I took their backstories and then I just made the lore from that. So. I'm an orphan because I killed all my family. <laughs> I, I my beat them to is... death with the dog. <laughs> my village is gone. <laughs> if you get a backstory like that, uh, make sure that you uh, inform a psychologist of that child's uh, uh, issues. <laughs> Clear. Children, children of the corn. I got seven of them. Seven of them. Right here <laughs> <in my table. laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, but but yeah, like I said, I mean. Jesus Christ, guys. Well, you guys clearly have uh, experience with the PCs adding their own lore in, their own backstories. Mm-hmm. But uh, from the side of the PCs, as a player, when you do play, uh, things have happened to your character. How do you interject that into uh, uh, just a game that you're running in general? That, you know, you did kill your parents with a dog, and you, for some odd reason, want your entire. <laughs> party to know that because the paladin would be really interested in that information respect (laughs) respect essay the paladin of helm wants to know you know oh you killed a demon lord i killed my parents (laughs) exactly (laughs) oh Uh, but how do you let your pcs or how as pcs do you interject that and um, maybe even as DMs, are you open to letting the PCs 
just shove a bit of random lore in there. Uh, for example, I threw in the bullet mating habits and that their jizz is actually good for some things. Oh, man. <laughs> I'm not the one who said we should go and milk the bullets, but I gave a reason as to what good their uses are. Boy, wow. It's like, uh, oh, yeah, the, well, uh, you rolled a natural 20 on your history check. You, you tell know, me what you're doing. You're actually <laughs> making my making my brain hurt because we have a we have a player that we've known for years. Uh-huh. And Carol. his whole thing is no, no, not Carol. His whole thing is uh his his Carol his character always says uh oil of boule. It's good for the skin. Nice. Uh, it was not uh, mentioned that way, but now that's all I can think of. Thanks. Thanks. Oh. oh. <laughs> God. Oh, it's exfoliating. <laughs> Oh, As PCs and oh, all of our viewers have left. <laughs> <laughs> we had and viewers. we gained about three that are not allowed legally. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Probably. Welcome to Between the Furries, where we talk <laughs> fantasy monsters. Uh, Getting it on. That's going to be the next offshoot show. <laughs> <laughs> so you squeeze the bullet testicles until every drop comes out. Now you would think it would hurt them, it. but don't worry, they're heavily armored. So they're your just best tickling. friend. <laughs> so this is lore that anybody can interject in their campaign now. Yes. <laughs> yes. That's uh that's open license lore. <laughs> wow. Oh man. Frank, let's start with you. If your uh, PCs want to interject their own lore into your campaign say even in the middle of a campaign or how would you as a PC interject your own lore uh, 99% absolutely I definitely run with it because the campaign is always should always be fluid it should always be open to new ideas uh, lore thought up on the spot can be hilarious and it can also give you the DM an opportunity to go you know what? Uh, I like there, that. There, there's your next intersection. Um, God, where is go Scott right now on this with interjecting lore? He, he is he is about eight uh, Don Julio's into it. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I believe firmly Get in it. Get the chickens long, away from him. Yeah, as long as it doesn't... Oh my God, yes. <laughs> uh, as, as long as it does not ruin... Uh, the plot line. I mean, you know, oh, well, I, I was a member of the Paladin, so I'm able to uh, perform three three classes, and I can heal, kill, and use Fireball. Uh, Sounds like you're a standard player, anyway. Yeah, yeah, but uh, <laughs> I, the, the lore just gives depth, and uh, we on Murder Hobo, uh, we love that kind of shenanigans. I mean, any uh, improv done by the players can always be used against them at a later time. Uh, case in point, today I had to ask Jesse uh, the names of his family because he didn't put it in the back, uh, backstory. And as soon as I did, he's like, you better not touch my fucking family. Oh, uh, those fuckers were gone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, were already, they were already dead, Jesse. They're already I dead. Just I needed, needed a dead. tombstone. Just needed a <laughs> this is official because he's already said it prior to the show. That's right. <laughs> Oh, he, he's like, you better not kill my fucking family. <laughs> <laughs> better Everybody not. I already did. So, yeah, I, I love lore. I love uh, improv made up on the spot. Uh, it can be quite creative. And uh, again, it offers you the opportunity to say, well, you know what? On this one shot, yeah, you're going to find the shield of the nine skulls and uh, you're going to realize it's cursed. So I, I love lore on the spot as long as it doesn't wreck the campaign. Sure. David, DJ, interjecting. Hey, do you want to take this? <laughs> to be honest, I'm probably a slightly more restrictive myself. Sure. I I go heavy on lore and planning out a lot, but I am not opposed to it as long as I feel it can fit. Uh, I don't do everything that's whimsical. Uh, and this is probably because sometimes I've had some very ridiculous uh, uh, inquiries, uh, but I have no problem with going a little off the cuff, especially if it fits along with the background that they originally came up with. 
Um, if like they gave me a background of like I was a rogue and you know I did all this crazy stuff, but you know apparently they want to interject uh, suddenly that they're also from a noble family. And I'm like, mm, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but that's me. I mean, and to be honest, I've probably gotten a lot looser in my time and more accepting. I used to be quite the hard rules lawyer when I was younger. I was I was rough. I was by the book. But then you get older and you get wiser and you say, fuck it. Now he's <laughs> house. <laughs> Although, pain popping medication he could take. That's it. But that's, oh, look, it's Mur Hobos. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, I got to drink again. <laughs> nice. That's Scott, too, strangely enough. Yeah. <laughs> Only when I play with him, though, I don't know why. <laughs> All right, Beard. David, did you have anything you wanted to add to that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, like, for example, I mean, if, um, you know, I ask somebody to tell me a little bit about their character, like, give me a description. And they'll be like, well, I got a scar on my cheek and all that. And it's just like, yeah, tell me, how do you get that scar? And they'd go into that story and all that. And I'd write the thing down. This came from the Duke of Alabaster. It's just like, okay, Duke of Alabaster, you know, use that later, you know. So... It's, it's little things like that. I kind of do like, you know, <laughs> when they come up with something random about their character, I would ask them about it. So, mm -hmm. All right. Oh, thank you very much, David. Uh, and everybody else, we are getting around to nine, uh, 9.01, and I'm getting really good at getting really close to ending things on time now. Uh, so let's go around real quick. Uh if you guys want to tell me where you can find you again, reintroduce yourselves, uh, and then uh, as your part of your final thoughts, what's what's your favorite lore that you've encountered or or have made up on the spot yourself? Uh, and since we started with Frank last time, uh, DJ, what do you got for us? Oh, good. Uh, that that's a tough one. Um, I think. Jeez. That, that's actually a really tough one. <laughs> Favorite lore I've come up uh, I've uh, come up with on the fly is probably finding uh, information how to make a grand evil spell in a city that is in a different dimension and giving us a reason to go there. That's All right. Cool. That's cool. All right, David, what do you got? Well, I'm David. You can always find me here. <laughs> I um my favorite I am fascinated with the city of Waterdeep and Dungeons and Dragons in um, Deep. He's like Waterdeep. No, I I do. I really like it. I li I like um in particular I like the yawning portal. Uh the reason is in the thing the uh, piece of lore that fascinates me is Durnan. And it's just like, okay, why doesn't turn an age? You know, the story behind that is fascinating. You know, it goes back before Waterdeep was ever, was even founded. So. I so, don't yeah. know that lore. And now I'm interested to go look it up now. Exactly. <laughs> Dang it. Exactly. It's very. Dernan, Dernan does that age. He, <laughs> he's as old as Waterdeep. So. You want yeah. just general lore? Just Dragonlance Hall of Dragonlance lore. Just read it. Yeah. Just read <laughs> All it. All like 200 <laughs> novels. <laughs> oh man all right frank uh most interesting lore you've come up with or you've encountered got it well encountered it's got to be scott the chicken fucker hands down <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> yeah. right off the cuff uh lore that i've done uh the backstory to head wound larry yeah so, yeah uh larry or harry Harry. Which one? Oh, or yeah, Barry? Barry, scary, head wound scary. Uh, scary Terry. Get, get, getting hit in the head with a mining timber to lose one quarter of his skull and being quite incapacitated in the intellectual arts, but good enough to swing <laughs> a hammer uh, is still my favorite go to character. But, He's basically uh, Eddie from Vacation. <laughs> Steel yeah, plate in my cousin, head was Cousin it? Eddie. <laughs> yeah. But S Scott talking to the nuns. Admitting that he was a chicken fucker, hands down. Hilarious. Was, oh, <laughs> I think we're all like, 
I don't think he was planning on that either. I think that might have been the Don Julio talking. Yeah, he was shit faced, and, t- and he just kept going on and on. And he was like, looking down at his KFC and just like, I need to come up with something. <laughs> Yeah, so Scott, uh, hands down, award-winning lore right there. Just wow. I thought we were going to get canceled uh, after that. Yeah, it goes, <laughs> goes with the two categories, uh, award-winning lore and most disturbing lore. Yeah. It was disturbing because <laughs> re- if you can, rewatch or listen to the show on the audio only, um, and you can hit me up at Phil Bar RPG. Don't forget, if you want to be on the show, be on the talk show, be on the one shot next Saturday, uh, M Hobo Inc. Twitter, Gmail. Back to you, Kyle. Back to me. That's right. God, disturbing. That's. <laughs> I plan on beating it this Thursday with uh, Cthulhu Rises, Everyone Dies. I don't know if you can. <laughs> I don't yeah, think I that's, can, that's, honestly. That's rough. That's, well, that's, that's, that's lore that one. you have right there, Kyle, because you're using Cthulhu. I, I mean, I guess that. maybe you could make another chicken fucker in the game, but he's just going to die. We're just going to kill him. <laughs> See, I'm actually going to switch out the whole Dagon Deep Ones angle yeah. into Cluckthulu. Cluckthulu, there you go. Cluck. 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 With a C. Cluck. Uh, I'm going to oh. get canceled again. <laughs> but you can see that on Thursday night starting 8 o'clock Eastern time. That's a different... Never mind. <laughs> Guys, let's say thank you to our sponsors, Pirate Dog Dice. <laughs> For when you're rolling like shit, Pirate Dog Dice and Oddfish Games and their adventure sense. <laughs> I'm almost done. I'm doing the stick figure of Scott. Okay. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Don't forget oh, the shine. Project. I'm almost there. <laughs> you. <laughs> don't want to look at horrible stick figures listen no, to our audio faces. podcast <laughs> yeah. hit us up if you want to play a game but not this week remember it's thursday saturday and then sunday with the margu campaign everybody wave to the camera say goodbye goodbye uh, hopefully our producer uh, hasn't fallen asleep uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> stick figure.